There's a lighthouse on the hillside that overlooks life sea. As the lighthouse guides ships through stormy seas, the Lord Sentinel brings a message of hope and inspiration to a world filled with strife. Join us as Pastor Juanita Folsom brings the anointed word of God to guide our lives. You will be inspired by the uplifting music and a message of true hope. So gather together in his name and rejoice. This is the Lord's Sentinel. And here is Pastor Juanita Folsom. Hello out there. It's so good to see you again. I got a special message for you today. And the title of this message is, When God Speaks, Believe. I want you to get that on the inside of you. Because faith is believing. Faith rises up within you. And that helps you to be able to believe because sometimes, you know, we just, we call it quoting the word, reading the word, speaking the word, until sometimes faith will rise up after we have spoken it. And then, you know, all of a sudden we start believing. And so that's what today's message is. I'm Juanita Folsom of Juanita Folsom Ministries, the Lord Sentinel Fellowship Church. You know, we have a school of ministry. And it's on Monday night at 7 o'clock. And our church service is on Tuesday night. And in our school, we're always trying to teach some of the latest things that is out there to help us believe when God speaks. And so come and be a part of us. We only take up a love offering. We don't charge for the school. And you're not going to find that out there. And so we're going to be speaking now, and I'm using the Living Bible today because we're wanting it to be very uh, uh, simple, where we just sort of understand that it's in our English language, and it's a translation, and so we want to uh, just study God's Word together. And so here, we're in Exodus, the fourth chapter, and it's verse 6. Then the Lord said to Moses, when? After God had taken, and Moses had said, how, where you send me, are they going to believe? And God told him, take the staff. What do you have in your hand? Take it, throw it down. And you know what? A miraculous thing started happening. See, when God speaks and you listen, miraculous things starts taking place. And you know what? It, it, it'll just come forth. And, and you'll get courage and you'll get boldness, more especially. Don't you know, after Moses threw that snake down, and then God says, pick it up by the tail. Don't you know he was afraid to do that? But he made himself do it. And when he did, and it turned back into a staff. Don't you know after that, Moses was so bold. <laughs> Don't you know he strutted his stuff? I would, wouldn't you? If I had picked up a snake that had once been my rod, and God did a miracle like that, whoo, I would want to go out and just let everybody know what my God can do. And so it says then, and I want you to listen to that. This happened after Moses saw what God could do. And so it says, now put your hand inside your cloak. So Moses put his hand 
inside his cloak. See, he was obedient. He did exactly what God said. That's what you and I must do. When you get a prophetic word, write it down, get it on tape. And whatever God says, uh, you do exactly the way he said it. And so it says uh, here, so Moses put his hand inside his cloak. And when he took it out again, his hand was as white as snow with a severe skin disease. Ooh, wouldn't that be a shock to you? Wouldn't fear come again just like the snake? <laughs> and now here you did what God said and you got a skin disease. And so we see here that seven. Now put your hand back into your cloak. The Lord said, so Moses put his hand back in. And when he took it out again, guess what happened? He was obedient. And he did what God said again. See, we got to do what God says again and again and again. And God will do what he promises and so we see then that as he took it out again, it was as healthy as the rest of his body. Isn't that awesome how our God can heal? This was leprosy. In some of the other books and translations of the Bible, it says that his hand, when he put it in and brought it out the first time, it was leprosy. And there was no cure for leprosy. You say, why would God do that? Because God was going to show him something there's no cure for. That if you will do as I say, that I will show you a miracle. Aren't you crying out for miracles? You know, I'm not satisfied. When I pray for the sick, I want to see them healed. When I uh, speak over people's lives, I want to see it take place. Sometimes I lay awake all night long when I've prayed for you and God's given you a word and it hadn't come to pass. I start in my bedroom. I'm fighting and I'm warring because you know what the word of God says God says give me no rest and for you to have no rest until he makes Judah a praise and so that's what I do I don't give God any rest I keep on reminding him I keep on telling him and you would say well if God said it I don't have to do all that well the word says you do. The word says that God says to you, <laughs> keep on reminding him and don't give him any rest until he makes Judah a praise. And we want to be a praise in the earth. <laughs> and as we're a praise in the earth, people will see our God and they'll want to praise him too. And so here we see then this miraculous sign of his hand now being healed like the rest of his body. In verse 8, the Lord said to Moses, don't you like how God keeps on talking to Moses? He didn't just tell him and then say, when Moses came again, he didn't say, well, I told you one time that's enough. Isn't that way we do as parents? We're so harsh sometimes when we need to keep on telling and watching and doing until that child. That's why God says, bring up a child in the way that it should go. And it's going to take you keeping on telling that child. And Moses was a child of God. That was called. And so God kept on telling him. And the Lord said to Moses, if they do not believe you. Now, see, he's going back to the very first there. 
where uh, God uh, Moses said, what if they don't believe me? Now, again, God is making a point here. And he is saying, if they do not believe you and are not convinced by the first miraculous sign, they will be convinced by the second sign. Don't you love that? <laughs> you know, Gideon, he was a, a one that he asked God for a sign. And God gave him a sign, and when he gave him a sign... Uh, Gideon just wasn't truly, uh, didn't get it yet, you know. And so he said, God, just do it the other way. And you know what? God did it the other way as a sign for Gideon. And so we see, and if they didn't believe you or listen to you, even after these two signs. See, God knows human nature. And you might as well know human nature and how human nature is and just keep on doing the way God tells you to do and know that humans are humans. I said to God one day, God, why don't people listen? God, you know, sometimes I, I just get really aggravated with God's children don't say you don't. Don't be so religious that you pretend you love everybody you're supposed to. But, you know, we sometimes have problems. And so I was telling God that. I, sometimes I just don't get it because I'm tired. And the Lord said, well, Juanita, they're just dumb sheep. And I thought, oh. Oh, I get that, <laughs> you know. And so we're just dumb sheep. <laughs> and that just makes it easier when we're having a problem and people are not listening, <laughs> you know. And don't say, I called you a dumb sheep. God said it. And so just take it like I did and let it just help you to be able to deal with God's children. And if they don't believe you or listen to you, after these two signs, then take some water from the Nile River. Now, the Egyptians worshipped the Nile. They worshipped the God of the Nile and pour it out on the dry ground. When you do, the water from the Nile will turn to blood on the ground. Another miracle. Here we have another miracle. Here we have that of God doing the work. God doing things so unique to get people's attention. But you know what? I want to speak to you out there. You can do that. You can do things really unique for God. When God wants to use you, he'll tell you to do foolish things. But if you'll do it, then those foolish things, you know, they're found in the heart of a child. And we're children of God. And God says for us to come as little children and so we'll just do those foolish things. And so it says 10, but Moses pleaded with the Lord. Do you plead with the Lord sometime when he's told you to do something really foolish? And he said, oh, Lord, I'm not very good with words. I never have been. That reminds me of myself. I'm not very good with words. You know, if I'm trying to spell something, I have to call my son up sometime, one of my grandsons up sometime, and you know, at last resort, I'll dig out the dictionary, you know. And so, we got to do whatever it takes, whether we're good at speaking or writing. God has given us such uh, provisions for all this. 
And so he said, I never have been, and I'm not now. Even though you have spoken to me, I get tongue-tied, and my words get tangled. Do you feel like Moses? If you will study how God used Moses, though this is how he felt about himself, Perhaps this was when little Moses was in mother's womb and she got fearful because, oh, all the boy babies was going to be killed. Don't you know of the emotions that Moses' mother felt? And the little baby, the silent cry of Moses on the inside. And so maybe it made him tongue-tied. Made him, it made him where he couldn't speak well and so God is wanting to touch your tongue he's wanting this message to speak into you because Moses was sent to be a deliverer but you know what God's called us God's told our ministry that's why we have the lighthouse as our emblem because uh, uh, we, m my son, he, when we decided to have the lighthouse, he took uh, and he was wanting to see what our TV program would be called. And he thought of the word sentinel. And it was a soldier standing guard. And so that's got what God's made us to be. We're a soldier standing guard. And when things are taking place, we sound the alarm. I'm sounding the alarm out there to you, America. It's time you turn back to the one true God. If you have strayed away from God, and if you have allowed this leadership that we have in our country to make you think that God's not real, I will say to you today, God is real. He is going to turn America back. But it says you and I pray, as you and I turn back to God, we will be Moses as leading the people. We will be Moses and Joshua's. Joshua was trained by Moses. And, you know, you've got to have people that are trained that when you go home, then they can take your place and they can carry on the ministry. So I'm praying over you right now in Jesus' name that God is touching you right now. If you feel like I can't speak, lay your hand on your throat. Uh, if you have to stick out your long tongue and grab a hold of it and let the anointing come, uh, just do it, whatever it takes. Do the foolish things uh, that God tells you to do. God, anoint them. I want to tell you, if you have enjoyed this message, would you take uh, and send your offerings. If you don't go to church and we're your church, would you send your tithes and your offerings so that we can do the work of the Lord? I minister to the Spanish. I minister to Fort Pierce, Davy, Orlando. I just go wherever God opens the door. I can't speak a word of Spanish, but you know what? People can translate it for me. They can interpret. And so, see, I don't let my tied tongue stop me because I can't speak Spanish. I can't, I don't say, well, I can't go to the Spanish. Yes, you can. You can go anywhere you need to be. God will have people there that they have ministries and they just looking for a place to be used. And so I want to encourage you. I want to tell you to be like Moses and, and let your tongue now just be untied and, and let God move through you and, and speak through you. And God's going to send you the money to do it. 
but you know what? The way you get money, you have to sow the seed. You have to plant money into a ministry. And then you can say, God, I did my tithe. I did my offering. And now you're obligated. See, God's obligated. He's obligated himself because he says, bring your tithes and offerings into the storehouse that there might be plenty. I'm praying plenty over you. I'm praying that you be blessed, that you prosper, that you be anointed. I pray that God will come right where you're at and an open heaven will open over your head. And God is doing a mighty miracle. And you will see God move. And I love you out there. God bless you. Thank you for watching the Lord's Sabbath and inviting us into your home. Tax-free donations can be sent to Juanita Folsom Ministries, P.O. Box 44, Lake Placid, Florida, 33862. And thank you again for joining us. And he has shown a light around me that I could clearly see and tell.